Intel has just announced, suddenly and with immediate effect, the shutdown of Clear Linux OS. Who cares, right? It's just a niche distro. Nobody ever used it. It was weird, incompatible, too technical. And yet, the end of Clear Linux OS is far from insignificant. In fact, it's a serious loss. But to understand why, we need to change our perspective. Clear Linux wasn't just any distribution. Clear Linux was a strategic Intel project with paid developers working on advanced optimizations in a controlled environment. It wasn't designed for average users, but to maximize software performance on Intel hardware. In this sense, it was a laboratory distribution, an experimental field for testing kernel patches, performance benchmarking with compilers, libraries, kernel and microcode optimizations, and experimentation on security hardening, parallelism, and build process optimization. But why is this important even for those who didn't use it? Many of the innovations developed in this distro quietly shaped the broader Linux ecosystem. We're talking about real deep optimizations, improvements to glibc, OpenMP, GCC, LLVM, early experiments with systemd boot, and a unique modular bundle system. Clear Linux didn't just use Intel's compilers like ICC or Clang, it pushed them to the limit with aggressive flags and fine-tuned builds. Its benchmarks were so strong that they forced other distributions to step up their game. And even though Intel's drivers weren't exclusively tied to Clear Linux, it still served as one of their key internal testing grounds, a sort of controlled environment where they could push their hardware and software to the edge and measure the results. In July 2025, after a decade of development, Intel shut it all down. No warning, no security grace period, just gone. And that's a real loss, because Clear Linux wasn't just another distro. It was different. It was built from the ground up to be a performance testbed, a kind of living laboratory for squeezing every last drop of speed from Intel hardware. But here's the thing most people don't know. It also ran incredibly well on AMD. Pharonix benchmarks proved it again and again. Clear Linux often topped the charts, outperforming mainstream distributions like Ubuntu and Fedora, sometimes by huge margins. Why? Because everything in the distro was designed with performance in mind. Every package was compiled with carefully selected flags. It used profile-guided optimizations and link time optimizations, consistently, system-wide. And to make the most of modern CPUs, it even built multiple versions of the same libraries, each tuned for specific instruction sets like AVX2 and AVX512. Then at runtime, the system would pick the best one based on your processor. That's smart engineering. One of the most fascinating things, though, was its stateless design. Unlike most Linux distributions, Clear Linux drew a clear line between system files and user files. Everything under slash USR was treated as part of the core system, while slash etc, opt, slash home, and slash var were left under user control. What did that mean in practice? It meant that a fresh Clear Linux install had a nearly empty slash etc folder, because the system didn't dump config files there by default. You could even wipe out parts of the file system like slash etc or var, and the system would still boot just fine. It was like having a factory reset button built right into the OS. Elegant, minimal, and incredibly resilient. The advantage was incredible. Even if you completely deleted the etsia and var directories, the system continued to work perfectly. It was like an instant factory reset, something unthinkable with other Linux distributions where this operation would render the system completely unusable. Clear Linux also used a unique package management system based on bundles. Instead of traditional RPM or DEB packages, the distro distributed software in the form of bundles that incorporated all necessary dependencies for a specific function. It was a modular approach that greatly simplified software installation and management. The performance numbers were impressive. The distribution often outperformed other distributions by 15 to 20% or more in specific workloads, even on low power hardware. In some benchmarks like Cymark, the results were even dramatic, with Clear Linux completely dominating the competition thanks to compiler optimizations applied at the system level. But the impact of this distro went far beyond pure performance. Innovations developed in the project regularly filtered into the mainstream Linux ecosystem. Kernel patches, library optimizations, advanced build techniques, all of this ended up benefiting other distributions and upstream projects. 
The project served as a technological accelerator for the entire ecosystem. The closure came in the context of a particularly difficult week for Intel in the open source world. Several prominent Linux engineers left the company, some upstream drivers were left orphaned, and various software engineers working on open source and Linux projects were laid off as part of Intel's latest restructuring. Intel is going through an economically difficult period. Despite the beginning of 2025 being better than expected, the company continues to register losses and announced another wave of layoffs just days before Clear Linux's closure. Clear Linux probably cost Intel several million dollars a year, considering the dedicated development team, build and testing infrastructure, and all costs associated with maintaining a cutting-edge distribution. The implications of Clear Linux's shutdown are many. Intel loses a full-fledged internal lab based on Linux, a place where performance solutions could be tested ahead of time in a controlled environment. The Linux ecosystem loses a powerful technological accelerator, a forge of low-level optimizations that often made their way into the kernel, system D, and shared libraries. And there's now less competitive pressure on mainstream distributions, because clear Linux, whether people liked it or not, was often an uncomfortable benchmark for Ubuntu, Fedora, and others. Clear Linux wasn't just another distro. It was genuinely one of a kind. More than a distribution, I'd call it an extreme project, one that poured cutting-edge technology and a slice of Intel's engineering firepower directly into the open-source world. Its shutdown doesn't leave me indifferent. It's a clear signal that Intel is stepping back from parts of the open-source space it no longer sees as strategic. After pulling the plug on Project Celadon for Android on x86 and scaling down its efforts on the client side, Intel has now shut down Clear Linux too. And with that, something important quietly disappears from the Linux landscape. It's a qualitative loss for those working in performance optimization and a signal that open source needs new sponsors willing to fund experimental infrastructures not just finished products. The most revolutionary innovations often emerge from research projects like Clear Linux, which require long-term investments without immediate guarantees of economic return. While technically Clear Linux could be forked since all the code is available under open source licenses, doing so would miss the entire point of what made Clear Linux special. The distribution existed precisely because it was the creation of a tech and hardware giant like Intel. It was Intel's deep pockets, their hardware expertise, their internal access to upcoming CPU features, and their ability to collaborate directly with silicon engineers that gave Clear Linux its unique advantage. Without Intel's backing, a forked Clear Linux would become just another community distribution, stripped of the very essence that made it a performance powerhouse. The value wasn't just in the code, it was in Intel's ability to optimize for hardware that didn't even exist yet to test performance improvements with insider knowledge of CPU architectures. A community fork would inevitably lose this strategic advantage and become a hollow shell of what Clear Linux once represented. The end of Clear Linux marks the closure of an era of innovation. For 10 years, this project demonstrated what was possible when a hardware giant fully committed to software optimization. Its contributions will continue to live on in mainstream distributions, but the world has lost one of its most important technological experimentation laboratories. And those who think it's not important simply never understood that the real magic wasn't in the final product, but in the unprecedented combination of resources and expertise that made Clear Linux possible. What worries me even more about this whole story is Intel's current strategic position in the chip market. It's complex and marked by a deep transition. We're not talking about a company in free fall, but it's no longer the untouchable powerhouse that used to dominate the industry either. In short, Intel is struggling, but it's not doomed, yet. But there are serious risks if its strategy fails. And if that happens, we lose one of Linux's greatest allies in hardware compatibility, driver support, and ecosystem adoption. Intel, for better or worse, has always been a true ally of the Linux world. And a structural crisis, or even a gradual withdrawal, could leave a vacuum that no other Western player is currently able to fill. Let's be clear, Intel is one of the very few big tech companies that has truly invested in Linux. 
It provided mainline open source drivers, even when companies like NVIDIA and Broadcom were locking everything down. It offered consistent upstream support, kernel, Mesa, firmware, compilers. Intel literally paid developers to work full-time on core projects like GCC, LLVM, Glibc, Systemd, Wayland. It created projects like Clear Linux, but also Media SDK, the i915 graphics driver, and now the open-source IGC compiler stack for GPUs, all open-source. In short, Linux is embedded in Intel's strategy not just for servers, but also for internal development tools and even product validation. Intel also helped make Linux ready for the enterprise. Its CPUs are still among the most heavily tested in mission-critical Linux environments. Many key optimizations and power management features, like HWP or RAPL, come directly from Intel. The entire stack of enterprise distributions, Red Hat, SUSE, Debian, has evolved alongside Intel. Now I know all of this doesn't make Intel a saint. It's a corporation like any other, one that seeks control, exploits Linux, and uses it to drive its business. But if we think in pragmatic and strategic terms, the truth is, we, the Linux world, benefit from this relationship. And between the collapse of Intel and the collapse of NVIDIA, which currently dominates AI and GPU acceleration and has never really embraced open source, well, I'd honestly prefer to see NVIDIA fall. Because if Intel disappears, we lose a powerful industrial partner that actively supported Linux for decades. That's not ideology, it's strategic realism. And what's happening with Clear Linux might be the first crack in a much larger foundation. Theoretically, the project could be forked since all the code is available under open source licenses. However, maintaining a distribution that pushes technological boundaries requires significant resources that Intel paid for almost entirely. Without substantial and continuous investment in pushing the bleeding edge, there's little point in keeping Clear Linux active. The end of the distro marks the closure of an era of innovation. For 10 years, this project demonstrated what was possible with aggressive optimizations and innovative designs. This wasn't just the end of a Linux distro. It might be the beginning of a much bigger loss.